Wait, where are you? Hello. Check, check, check. There you are. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Oh, here we go. Try this. One, two, three, four. Background music. Foreground music. Heracles struck a song. Several blows about the head. I can't guarantee you. It was nothing a sub said. From birth, old days off, took to sweet. Okay, I can't, I can't stay in sync. Alright, how about we fade out? Okay. We're fading out. What, what, literally? We're fading the music out. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Hey, folks. Hey, hey. So this is a special presentation from the Potts House, and we're trying something new. I was trying to figure out how to do the live stream with voices and music, and I wound up setting up in what you'd call our control room rather than... Um, podcast studio rather than the podcast studio which is kind of a mess and has mouse poop all over it <laughs> we haven't been in there for a while we haven't been in there for a and while some thanksgiving dishes got put away yeah not and then, entirely washed and then after that we weren't in there for a while yeah. but the mice were mice were <laughs> fancy that so i've been bringing pieces of gear out of there and trying to get this set up with my 2008 computer <laughs> i mean just to be clear it's not like you're like got a sweet mouse no no no, no. Way to like walk through no the room. it just needs just, a good you know. everything needs to be wiped down and cleaned and and we don't want to be dealing with hantavirus too all right yeah. <laughs> reassembled um yeah it's kind of gross uh and i rated it for parts for this computer and i spent all day yesterday screwing around with some real vintage gear like my a lot of my audio stuff is from the 1990s early 1990s sometimes yeah and just like endless struggle with trying to keep uh, like keep the stuff working but i can't even install updated software because my computer is too old to run it it won't install it oh. says, sorry i can't support can't such it. a vintage computer hey it would be vintage it still works still still works apparently i'm vintage now. still works great say? But anyway, uh, like I said, so we're in the, the control room and not our podcast studio. And I have an all different setup cobbled together out of different stuff. The yeah. mics are the same. Um, some of my software doesn't work. The, the voice plugin that I've been used, that I used in the whole run of um, the Grace and Paul podcast. <laughs> like it lost its license manager or something. I, I'm, wearing, I'm like, got my little fake... Uh Light her up. <laughs> the, for the, pour one out for the for the much for the late lamented Grace and Paul Potts cast. Damn. Uh, that baby's fifteen months old now. Yeah, Jeez. we should be. Uh, yeah. Beats. Well, here's the thing with the Grace and Paul Potts cast. Yeah. We were just barely getting it done. Barely. And it involved me staying up till like four a.m. every Sunday night and to fin it to like produce the thing and get it out. Um, and then we had another baby. Yeah. And who was great? Who was great? And we and got yeah. and we continued to get older. Yeah. And this all just kind of pushed us like one step one step beyond nearer the edge. Right. <laughs> so yeah. uh a few things have happened since we last spoke here. <laughs> Yeah, one of my friends is like, I only get on Facebook on Sundays. Anything happened last week? <laughs> <laughs> last week, more stuff happened in one week than I think 
in any single week since 9-11, honestly. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it, I kind of had, I felt it coming, right? Yeah. Like I had, I posted jokingly. Yeah. So next week we've got the time change, full moon, and Friday the 13th. All in one week. Stay safe, guys. <laughs> Stay safe. And yeah, last Friday, I, um, the Friday before last, I had a, a yeah. doctor appointment and my heart rate was, I'm generally fine, but my heart rate was crazy high. And they actually gave me an EKG in the just office. Just to check, just to see. Yeah, and it was still remained high. And it's like, well, EKG looked mostly okay, a little weird, but I didn't have any chest pains or shortness of breath. So, you know, I said, well, just take your pulse, you know, every day next week and see how it goes. But we could feel the last week coming. We, yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it was it was this sense that everything was about to change, you know, yeah. and that I think what made me so panicked is that no one else seemed to be recognizing it. I had yes. been sending out emails at work and talking to people. I'd been talking to people. I, I, I think I'd been talking to people personally and privately for uh, two weeks. Yeah. Two, three weeks. Well, and But I didn't like go public on Facebook and in my cir- social circles until last week. Two weeks uh, p- previously, I'd been talking about, as, as I'd been asking at work, whether they were going to roll out like a set of contingency plans and policies to deal with to deal with the uh, outbreak. We haven't said it yet. What? The pandemic. The pandemic. The COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic. pandemic. If you're a historian from the future and this is the only surviving (laughs) piece of media you could find. We're talking about the COVID-19 pandemic. Buried in the rubble. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I I don't want to get too apocalyptic, but I don't think this is going to go smoothly. No, it's not. Uh, You know, like... uh, I, I, yeah, I, it, you'll hear me inarticulate and frustrated tonight. Well, I, I think I want to say a couple of things right out of the gate, and I'm going to reaffirm them several times. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, the vast majority of us will not die from this. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of us will catch it. So most of us will catch it. Possibly by the end of the year, yeah, like 70, 80 percent of the population will have caught this by the end of the year. Unclear exactly how yeah. high that number will be, but and most of us will survive, right? So let's just be very clear about that to begin with. Most of us will catch it, most of us will survive the infection, yep. Um, and really, the the some people describe it as hysteria and panic. I call it, I like to think of it as, as due concern or, or due diligence or due uh, prudence. Right. Um, the concern is, and oh, let me put it in these terms, because this is my favorite one. Well, you know, that many people die every year from like automobile accidents. <laughs> you know how many people die of the flu? i just saying. We don't have a... a- Here's a the systemic thing. tool to prevent that from automobile. Actually, we so we, we totally do. Okay. We you know um, that same sort of indifference that we, I see in people is what prevents us from stopping automobile deaths. Yes. But that's not the point. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get all of the year's annual automobile deaths in a two week period. <laughs> right. In you know at the same you know at the same time, all needing hospital care in hospitals that are already sixty five percent full. Yeah, yeah. So if you add all of the automobile be- automobile deaths of a year to one or two weeks and bring them to hospitals that are 65% full, you'll have a crisis. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's what the concern is about. Because number one, um, containment, containment was out of the gate. That horse left the barn like a month ago. Yeah, a month ago it might have been possible to put in containment, containment measures. That would have been the time to shut down public transit and send All these everyone things. home. And, right, like a month ago. Right, and and to and be try f- and keep yeah to basically try and keep infected people out of the communities, even though we couldn't test to find them yet. Right, not yet. Yeah. But 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 so I'm a Midwestern housewife, and I can read. These are my qualifications. <laughs> All right, this is what I have. Yeah, um, I started to get concerned 
beginning of February. We started talking like, yeah, we got to do something towards the end of February, second half of February. And then I started asking around um, in all of our circles, like places we take the kids regularly and so on. So what's the plan here? What's the contingency plan? We should emphasize that the epidemiological community, that's a difficult word. (laughs) Epidemiological community saw this coming because it's been coming it's for been coming. months and months like the you know the case cases the first case appeared in like november yeah we had it was, became a crisis in december january in china right. like china was started like canceling a lot of travel for chinese new year right. towards the end of january i mean it's it's been coming and i need to just take a moment to thank publicly the public health officials in china that bought us precious time I'm sorry we squandered it. But yeah, we, well, some yeah. of them, in fact, who died doing it. Died doing you know? it, right. Um, and some of them, as soon as they got things under control in China, got on a plane and went to Italy hmm. and brought ventilators. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, all that said, so as as a just a, a really, truly a layperson, um, it wasn't hard to like see this coming on so i'm imagining if you are say someone in charge of public health in the united states then um or in this or in the state of michigan or in any american state um or any american county then you probably saw at least as much as i did if not more Mm -hmm. so i'm a little bit concerned that folks were not doing anything doing anything and last week i started calling people and i was talking to people who have uh responsibility and they had been waiting some of them for months for someone to tell them what to do people were really expecting a hierarchical sort of top-down messaging driven by the federal government and propagated through the state governments and and, and the cdc yeah and the cdc and the really hard thing I've had to explain to people is no one's going to come and explain to you what to do. Yep. You need to figure this out and you need to do the right thing. And you need to do it yesterday, last week, last month. Yep. I've been talking about how this is basically, it's not even just that there's no effective federal authority. There's a malicious federal authority malicious. in place. Oh, it's openly is, malicious. That is blowing resources in all the wrong directions and has contempt for expertise, open contempt for expertise, and the organizations that are in place, what's I, left of them. Yeah. yeah. I got a little open contempt for expertise myself. Well, but um, it's hard, you know, it's well earned. I'm, but that's I'm not it. saying credentials. I'm saying expertise. <laughs> oh, 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 actual expertise. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's I think that's the better, um, better marker. But but then I've, I've basically been saying this: the response is going to happen from the bottom up. This is the time for the actual anarchist left to rise and start saving lives. You know? Well, uh, and um, this is going to be their pretext for a fascist crackdown. Right. So it's very important that the anarchists, the left. people, do it. Right. And try to reduce that that excuse, that pretext. That pretext. pretext. Right. That, you know, we, we're doing this. Everyone's getting fed. Everyone's staying home. Keep the co- keep the emergency rooms empty, as empty as they can. Because I, there's really no stemming this at this point. I think if we had started social distancing three weeks ago, yeah, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a month ago. Um, we'd have the curve quite flat. We, we'd, we'd be ahead of the curve, right? Yeah. But uh, starting now, and, and really kind of a slow, pathetic start out of the gate, I mean, really, I, and I, I, know, I know people feel like this has been really challenging, and this social distancing is extreme, um, but if we're going to start this late, we need to start with Italy's lockdown voluntarily. Voluntarily go nowhere but hospitals, groceries, and and the pharmacy, we needed to implement that, but on a voluntary basis. You're we, saying, yeah, yeah, we need to implement. We need to implement implement that this past week on a voluntary basis. Before we have to have the national guard in every city, uh, uh, implementing it at gunpoint. Yes, right. Like, and actually shooting and people who break who run through. shooting people who break it, and then also um, jailing people, which is already it's a humanitarian disaster mm-hmm. starting to prisons. unfold in prisons yeah. Yeah. and jails. In detention centers, it's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Um, and this is this is how we get rounded up, All right? 
Um, yeah. <clears throat> we get so, rounded up, possibly trying to bring food to people who are locked down. Right, yeah. who are locked down. Exactly. Who haven't had any food and, and can't afford to buy food and can't afford to have it shipped to them. Can't have their, don't have their jobs, don't have their tips, right. don't have their... Don't have any income yeah. and no way, th- there's been no eviction moratorium, so they're being evicted, yeah. um, et cetera. So, um, yeah, don't have water in their home, so they can't wash. And so I have to go to the hospital and then are homeless. And when they discharge, they, they you know, they can't obey the, the curfew and lockdown. Mm-hmm. I mean, and frankly, this is the time to be letting people out of pretrial detention because it will lessen the load on the jail system and lessen the damage to the public health. All those people need to go home and shelter in place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, some some uh, courts are starting to dismiss like misdemeanor cases. Praise God. Like I've, I've been reading about that. Oh, but I, I, I missed a, a thing I, I had actually had prepped. I prepped a thing. Yeah, we probably need to back up and do this um, in some organized. But... Um, you, we mentioned the sort of it's it's not just incompetence, malicious. Yes. The CDC um, has this very short list of where well, they say just broadly people over you know elderly people, people the, like the risk groups of COVID nineteen folks who are at risk from COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. It's you know elderly people, immunocompromised people, stuff like that, heart disease, and it's just very broad in general, and can kind of leave you feeling like oh well. And what a lot of people say, well, it's just those people, right? Actually, the WHO, and this is very interesting, it's harder to find this page on the, the World Health Organization's website now at the end of this week than it was at the beginning of the week. I found it easily on Ireland's public health website. <laughs> um, but uh, the actual list, the explicit list, is if you are 60 years of age and over. I hear American physicians and public health experts talking about 80 and over. Yeah. Have a long term medical condition. For example, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, cancer, or high blood pressure. Have a weak immune system, immunosuppressed. And what that immunosuppressed is, you know, you're undergoing cancer treatment, you're being treated for an autoimmune there, there's disease. There's lots of possibilities. Right. Yeah. So you, you usually, if you're immunosuppressed, you know this about yourself. Someone's told you. Or someone's already told you. Um, but that list that I just described is more than 50% of the adult population of the United States. Wow. It's you, a, can you like recap that briefly? Yeah, that <laughs> list. I think you need, we should emphasize that. That list of people are people who are 60 years of age and over. Yeah. Have a long-term medical condition like heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, cancer, or high blood pressure. Uh-huh. Or immunosuppressed. You have a weak immune system. That constitutes... More than 50% of the adult population of the United States. Of the adult population. Yes. Okay. That's not, more not than the total population. Not the total population, but that's more than, than that's more than half the adult population of the United States. Well, still, that's that's pretty sobering. So that whole group. Those are the, vul- you call that the vulnerable people. Those folks are vulnerable if they catch the disease of experiencing severe illness and higher mortality rates, and possibly long term, long and long term damage, damage to their lungs if if they recover. So, um, it's nothing to play around with. Now, yeah, again, yeah. I want to say, like I said at the beginning, this is important to recognize. Almost all of us will catch it mm-hmm. eventually. Mm-hmm. By next year, seventy percent of us will have had it, right? Yeah. Um. Almost, you know, I won't say almost all, but most of us will recover. Okay. Yep. But there's a significant number of people who will face severe illness and possible death. And if they are all severely ill, fighting for their lives at the same time, our hospitals can't function. Yeah. So that's, that's talk, talk about the curve and how that flattens it. So the there's a a piece. The, the the I think the most relevant thing you've seen like some of the graphics I'm sure, the graphic memes going around, but the really relevant chart where you compare two things is uh the the Spanish flu ec- epidemic of 1918 comparing Philadelphia mm-hmm. with St Louis. So in Philadelphia they had a case of the Spanish flu. I I 
don't want to call it the Spanish flu. That's an inappropriate term, but that's what okay, how it's the, known. The, 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 the last, <laughs> the last major. Well. The I'll call the 1918 flu. Yeah, the 1918 flu. Um, there was a case in Philadelphia. The public health director in the, that region made a decision to allow a parade shortly after that case. Right. Was detected. Was de- was detected. Yeah. It was like a couple of days within a week, and ultimately there were like seventeen thousand deaths in Philadelphia from the nineteen eighteen flu. I mean, it really just tore right through the city. Um, in contrast, about a month later, there was a case confirmed in St. Louis, and the public health director there, against everybody's advice, yeah, everybody hated this man. <laughs> he shut everything down. Like two days later, yeah, they sp- <laughs> yeah, it was awful. But two days later, um, he shut down the restaurants, the bars, most public places, and churches. He wouldn't let churches meet. He wouldn't let um, religious services take place. Everything was shut down. By contrast, twelve hundred people died in St. Louis. Hmm. Now, that's not a fair. Just you don't want to. You don't want to compare the numbers. It's not a strict right. fair comparison. It was half as many people per capita. Half as many people per capita died in St. Louis as in Philadelphia. Well, it's certainly highly suggestive. So, know, of, and of what the avoiding what the, the impact is. So that's what we mean by flattening the curve, because yeah. the curve in Philadelphia was everyone got sick all at once and continued to pass yeah, the disease yeah. socially. So uh, the the curve is not the number of people who get sick; it's the number of people who get rate. sick over time. Right. The shape of that curve is is, uh, is a tall, narrow curve. If people get sick in a cluster all at the same time yep. versus spread out over time. The curve is, is lower and more sloped. And so what what we actually want to see is we know ever you know, not ever we know so many, many people will get sick. We want to see that curve go along very slowly. We want to see like new cases appearing, you know, just a few each day. Gradually. Because what that means is we'll keep it within the capacity of the health system to treat. Because, yeah, whatever percentage of those cases that actually need an ER, a respirator, uh, oxygen, uh, medical support will not be happening all at once and will not overwhelm. And that's what's going to cause mass casualties. Right. Well, and and really throw things into absolute chaos. Because uh, in that situation, we're not just talking about casualties from the virus. Because people are still stuck in this, well, we've got to protect the immunocompromised. That's not actually the point. It should be. Yeah. That should be enough yeah. to act. Yeah. But the point here is that if the hospitals are at capacity for six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, right. you could have a car accident driving to work. A car accident you could easily survive, yep. but there's no bed for you. Yeah. I mean, any kind of random and thing. You have just, a stroke that you could easily survive. It's not just beds. It's because they're out of supplies. Too. They're out of supplies. Yeah. Seattle's already running out of PPE. And they're running out of doctors. Right. Doctors are dying themselves. Think, yeah. Big, right. Sick, having to... Because know. they're working double shifts right. constantly. Right. So um, <clears throat> that's where this becomes a real situation that has to be taken, you know, planned and taken on head on. Yeah. Um, so this flattening the curve is really about because this is another piece. I, I have been emphasizing that most of us will catch it, most of us will survive. There are some people who just won't survive this. Yes. And that's frankly unavoidable. We don't have a cure. We don't have a vaccine. That's actually just unavoidable. The, a lot of these deaths are going to be avoidable if we can provide medical treatment. Mm-hmm. And even if people are destined to die from it i would rather see them die in some comfort with at least palliative care rather than gasping themselves to death left on a gurney in a hallway you know yeah or um, or in the street or, or, or at home or at home having spread it to everyone spread it, having spread it to everyone right. their loved ones um unable to bury the body yeah no it's it's a real like iran's an absolute catastrophe. Yeah, they have mass graves yeah. in Iran. Yeah, they're digging. Uh, they're digging mass graves. So um, we may not get there, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a situation. It's so, unfolding. so talk about. I want to. I mention what I've been 
feeling like Cassandra because I'm talking to people and I have people like just a few days ago saying, you know, oh yeah, I'm still planning a vacation in Boston, Boston in a couple of weeks. And I'm like just in shock. It's like, are you, and what, have I, you heard nothing? Have yeah. you heard nothing? And then I, I actually was texting one of my coworkers uh, who will remain anonymous uh, on, um, on Wednesday. And I said, you guys should, they're away at a conference, so you guys should go into quarantine for at least a while. Two when weeks. When you get, well, minimum. technically two weeks minimum, but I didn't know that I could ask that, you know. And, and even that's. Yeah, probably yeah, but, not sufficient. But, but um, two weeks goes a long way. But, and he texted back, why? Has something happened? And like, so I just had the, I just re- replied with this laundry list, like, TSA workers at San Jose and LAX, um, you know, uh, first documented case in Michigan, which is now, I don't even know, I didn't check the numbers today. I haven't checked, I haven't checked today's numbers. But it was like 60, you know. 60? I'm sorry, maybe not. Maybe not. I think that it was, was 6 and then 12. That, six that's what I thought. 12, but, okay. but I'm I'm not certain either, I haven't checked today. Yeah, and then the first death reported in Michigan too. Yes. So, and then um, I just... Uh, they're starting to identify places where transmission may have occurred. Oh, hey, look at that. So fortunately, not places we or our children have been. Have been frequenting. But here's the thing. Yeah. Um, as this unfolds, the thing I think we need to realize is that this spreads silently. That's, because it that's apparently, a very good point. It's apparently um, you can pass it on before you are symptomatic. For, a, for at least two weeks. For at least, yeah, at least two weeks. Um, you may have no indication at all that you have no symptoms, you have no nothing. It. You have no indication whatsoever. The only indication that you would have in that time period are the antibodies your body's producing against it. That's it. So if you could get a test early. If you could get a test early, you would know because you would have antibodies. But absent that test, you would have no symptoms and you can pass it on. Mm-hmm. And there's so so yes, it's, 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 it's unclear. It's very likely that many many thousands of people have it. Or have it are passing it on quietly, silently right yeah. now. Uh, now, um, just because a lot of people are thinking, well, I don't have any symptoms, I don't have this or that, and you know, I'm not at risk. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you can't carry it to other people. Yeah, you don't become a vector. So that's right. what I wanted to say to my coworker traveling. Like, don't become a vector, like, dude. Don't become a vector. And they, and then I also hear other people. Uh, you know, this is not about my workplace. I'm sure your workplace is the same. Oh gosh, people I... are the same everywhere. But people are still having conversations like that. Preface it with these words. Well, if it isn't it's a hoax, hoax, if it's not a hoax, if this is real, and my God, it was so pernicious and horrible for that to ever ever come out ever uh become become a, thing. become a thing you know I mean, or if it's not a Chinese bioweapon or what <clears throat> and then you have people still, including a lot of elected officials, insisting on calling it either the Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus, yeah, God bless him I like. This isn't relevant. That's not the. That's, yeah. That's. I mean. Yeah. It's. It. We think that's where the transmission and the origin occurred. We think we still don't have a yeah, really actually, no. super clear picture of that. At this moment, it may not be relevant entirely. But it's not irrelevant at all because it's now Everywhere. the global pandemic right. virus. Right. Right. Well, and and just the sort of level of so. I think if you're listening and you're like, so, wow, what can I do? What, what, what should I do? Um, maybe you've heard what we have to say here. Maybe you've read some things. Um, I trust you to be an intelligent adult. I, I think you know what you need to do. All right. People are starting to get the word out, but you have just like just today. Okay. I, I get things off my chest. Go get off your chest. Just today, there are elected officials uh, and yesterday, Talking about how it's a great time to go out to the restaurants because they're all empty. You know, just a day or two ago, Memphis was celebrating like the you know big dance parties and promoting oh. that stuff. And you know, and and Biden was just saying today that get out if, and vote. that if you don't have symptoms, get out and vote. 
that you need to get to the polls. Meanwhile, Arizona is closing a number of polling places. They're doing their usual voter suppression of districts that they think are likely to to go for um, Sanders. Oh, Arizona would do that. And they're not postponing the election. But it, it he's basically saying it's fine to go out into these extra crowded public places, pol- you know, more crowded than usual public places if you don't have symptoms. But that's not the way the silent transmission works works at all. In fact, while you're symptomless is when you really pass it. Right. And his supporters are overwhelmingly older. It's kind of cynical on his part, isn't it? I'm just saying. <sighs> this well, is, you know what? Maybe he doesn't know. You know, maybe not maybe not his people know. His people know. He's he it's hard to say whether he knows anything. Oh yeah. But um so while we're uh while we're recording this, the debate is going on. We'll probably watch playback or playback highlights. Or we yeah. don't have cable. I'll but just read the read what happened. We'll read the yeah. The highlights. But um but yeah, you should take this seriously. Um not a joke. It's not a hope. This is a uh what, an inflection point? Uh uh a collapse of civilization kind of event, the sort of the last gasp, literally. For the record, yeah, I called it. I said it would be the bugs. Yes. Well, so th- what I mean by that is basically we have been a collapsing civilization for a long time. That's laid there, and we are actually because of this, and because we haven't been doing anything to turn the ship around for decades. We are now in a really fragile state. Absolutely bone fragile. Well, like it's like, you know what? Uh, you've seen these cups, like they're cracked, right? Yeah. It's right. already cracked, but it hasn't fallen apart yet, right? Yes. And the moment you put some hot tea in it, yes. the whole thing splits apart. Oh, yeah. 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 That's what we're looking at right now. Right. So it's all just, yeah. So our recommendations are to do effectively what we're doing. We have actually been kind of um, sort of low-key preppers. Well, well, yeah, we've been low-key preppers for a while, and we started having a discussion here as a household and a micro-community and extended family right. to um, right. start prepping and getting some things in the house for um, basically a 30-day self-quarantine. So so um, we're essentially going to be shut-ins. Um, More or less. We have a lot of food. Uh, we have a well. We have a well. Um, we don't, however, have a generator yes. or solar panels. Yeah. So we are still vulnerable to power loss losses. of power there. Right. I will still, I have to say it, unfortunately, be going to my job tomorrow morning hmm. um, because I don't have permission yet, like guidance, to work from home. And... Um, I think what I will be doing tomorrow is packing up some stuff and bringing it home. So you can work from home. Well, yeah. Because that's the thing I was about to say a few minutes ago. Right. Um, stop waiting for someone to tell you what to do. Right. Stop uh, well, waiting. Well, I, I haven't been. I've well, been I know pushing you my, my I know you haven't been. Structure. Like, and I, and I wasn't waiting for the choir sure, or for right, church or for right. anybody to tell me what to do. Right. I was trying to get them to yeah. join me yeah. so we could do this together for the benefit of the community. I should, but, I should emphasize that I work in a, um, an open office, which is nearly empty right now because a number of people were out at a conference. One guy just had a baby and we've just rearranged and, and moved into a lot of extra space. Mm-hmm. So I can actually go in and work and not act, not even come within a dozen feet of anyone. Right. And so I don't feel that my workplace is high risk. I'm not actually shoulder to shoulder with anyone. Right. Oh, I am very cautious about hand washing and using the facility like the restroom and kitchen, right? Right. Very uh, cautious about that. But I I don't think it's, you know, it's not the kind of work environment that a lot of people are stuck in. Right. And well, like you have these these um these auto workers in uh, Windsor, Ontario just walked out. Uh-huh. Because they couldn't get a safe work environment. Yeah, and as of as of uh, Friday, uh, my employer is not shutting down facilities, including in New Jersey. Only a hundred miles from New Rochelle, less currently than that. walled off by the National Guard. 
Right. So they're instituting a lot of aggressive cleaning measures and whatnot, but they are not yet actually shutting down the facility. And oh. I don't know what to say about that, except, um, anyway. Except, uh, <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. I mean, I, I expect that they actually will have to abruptly take a much more. Is that because they didn't plan for it? It's going to have to be abrupt and sharp. Right. Which I, is, and people think I'm saying some. I I don't know what people think I'm saying. What what but, what, what I'm saying is that they're going to suddenly have cases of many employees sick at once. And yeah, unable to come in, and they're going to realize that transmission has been happening has been in, happening. in the facility for weeks. And now, and you know, and most of them will recover. Yeah, some of them might not. But that they've got to stop that transmission, right? And and therefore shut it down. Oh, and they're, they're the folks who are like, well, you know, if everybody gets it, then we'll get it over with. Yeah, I have heard that. That's like the accelerationist view. That was my view. Why that, like, uh, instead of voting for Clinton, we all should vote for Trump. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's that's what the accelerationist view is, right? right? right. Just vote for him. Get it over with, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, but yeah, no. If you're waiting, if I there's something you can cancel, I'm not an accelerate. <laughs> I'm not an accelerationist either. I think it costs too many lives. Um, especially when I think. It's possible for us to do a lot of these things voluntarily. It's possible. It is. Now, what I really worry about are people who don't see. I mean, I worry about my job long term, too, because if we're really heading into a huge recession, a huge I mean, recession, I've been laid off several times before. It's not good. Nope. And especially after we just got done spending almost three years playing, uh, paying two mortgages. Yeah. Um, we don't have any cash reserves. We don't have any moved savings. Here for this job. We moved here for this job. If if this job goes Tanks. away, we're in deep shit. Like yeah. instant deep instant shit. Deep shit. Um, yeah, boy. So here we are. But but yet I am probably a lot. Will be able to do most of what I need to do from home. One uh, exception is that I'm actually working with a team in China that up until a week ago or so was half of them were locked down under quarantine. Indeed. And so uh, they had been, um, several of them did not have access to the prototype hardware that was at their office in China. So I had a, a prototype hardware set up in my office with a computer that they could remotely control, including a power supply they could remotely control to shut off and on so that they could turn it off and on again when it stops working right. Oh, wow. Right, so I set that up. I don't actually have the IT infrastructure to be able to set that up at home and manage right. it. Right. So that may have to go away. Mm -hmm. But um, but they're, some of them aren't on lockdown anymore. Some of them are, are back um, right. at the office, I think. Maybe all of them, I'm not quite sure, you know, stuff happens fast, but there's stuff I can do at home in this very home office. I can bring right. some prototype gear, hardware and stuff home and, and get quite a bit of work done here. Right. Um, you know, while this is going on, I, whether it's a month's worth, I, I don't, it's, it's a good not, question. but, um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, but but yeah. what I worry about are, are. There are an awful lot of people that can't do that. Can't do Their that. Their jobs no, don't exist in that kind of space. Right, in that kind of space. They don't exist at all. And what? What's? how is that supposed to work? Yeah. yeah. We yeah, don't have any... Exactly. See, Italy Italy's in the throes of it. Italy's in the deep grip of it. Italy put a moratorium on mortgage payments and rent. Put a moratorium on evictions. Said no, one could, no one's power could get shut off. Yeah. Because people can't go to work right now. Right. And then, of course, you have the schools, the situation with the, the schools. schools. So, uh, so the schools have been closed, but, you know, most most nurses have children in school. So how are they supposed to go to work? Right, to care for sick people. Well, their children are... I mean, and, and are we, you know, are we supposed to open up new daycares where we stuff all the kids in daycares? That's yeah, exactly the, the same opposite of what we should be doing. Do. Yeah, not, not, not actually a good plan. And, and it's true. Many parents have literally no other option other than sharing child care. Right. But, um, which, which they're doing. Which they're doing. And I, I can't blame them. Yeah. But it's our failure because no, we 
the answer isn't state child care. We put all the kids in a child care center. The answer is that every person. You don't want n- kids to be raised in a state crash. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not there for that. Okay. Um, is every single person needs a home. All of us need to have homes to go shelter in place in. Right. And we need them now. The and state, yeah. So if the state is worth anything, it needs to provide them. Right. And then businesses and industries that are that do service type stuff, restaurants and whatnot. I expect those places to go out of business fast. Oh yeah, their their margins are razor thin. Like this, they may they gonna... only may have a few days runtime, if that, before they just have to have to to close. I mean, yeah. forever. Yeah. Not just send people home and close for a few for days, days, but forever. But not can't make their rent, you know, whatnot. Right. And so the so even if we're only under let's say we only are all really stuck at home quarantined for three weeks and then they're sort of cautiously optimistic. emerging. They're yeah. Even with that, our communities are not going to look the same. They'll be ravaged, right. Well, and I think someone was saying, Oh, what what if but you know, we do this, we do all this social distancing and it's going to undermine the economy. It's like, there's two things. Number one, containment was off the table a month ago. Yeah, with no leadership. From right, it was off the table. Number two, when containment went off the table, the economy was off the table. Right. There's you, no... You, have to, right. you always have to think to yourself, well, who is the economy for? Who's it for? <laughs> What's the point of the economy anyway? If we have devastating... Human right. loss, right? Because even, so, let's say let's say worst possible case scenario, yeah. right? Yeah, we do nothing. We let it run its course, and the hospitals are overrun. And let's say you know what, our population is not as old as Italy. Maybe, maybe it won't be quite as bad. The rate of it, the 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 death rate, the mortality rate in Italy right now, mm-hmm. running unchecked. In an elderly population, it's about 5%. 5% of the people that catch it die. Wow. That's, a, you know, that's yeah. not trivial. Okay? I, so, I've heard statistics, uh, sort of estimates here as mm-hmm. to what will happen in various scenarios. And the number of deaths sort of starts here at about one and a half million and goes well, up from there. Uh, from one, I've, I've heard as low as 200,000. Okay, well, I've heard, you've heard more optimistic I've heard I've heard as low as 200,000. But really, if we're honest with ourselves about how far behind the curve we are, yeah. Yeah. We, we're, looking at, we're looking at a million deaths. So if you want to pluck millions of people out of the economy, right. and not just anyone, a disproportionate number of our elders and healthcare workers. Yeah. Yeah. It will be disproportionately weighted against um, our elders, our healthcare workers. And I know a lot of health insurance executives are excited about this. That means they can now hire Jesus. lower paid health healthcare workers who are not physicians with years of training. Their sickest patients will be dead. Mm. <laughs> and their oldest patients will be dead. It's good news for the economy in that frame. Right. But if that is your frame, I don't think your economy is worth having. Right. Right. It needs to die. Yeah, but an economy. Um, so if we were going to save the economy for the benefit of the people here, we would have contained this, and we would have worked on this. Been working on that project in January, like yeah. Taiwan, yeah, like yeah. South Korea, like many of these places, like Japan. Japan didn't have any cases yet, and they closed schools. So, and it can't. Uh, you know, uh, I, I should say there's there's some. There's some speculation that, that Japan is under testing, and that's why they have so low oh, few cases. Okay. But carry on. Oh, I'm just saying. I mean, I can't emphasize enough how much all of these interlocking crises are kind of hitting the fan at once, mm-hmm. and not the least of the, them is complicated by the fact that this is an election year and we're halfway through a primary a season. Primary season. Oh, okay. So, is anyone taking money on the election? <laughs> anyone? No, anybody? Because I'm, uh, I'm not sure it's going to happen. You mean taking money on whether there will be an election? Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm right. not sure this will going to be one. Right. I'm not convinced it's going to be one because I think absent this crisis, I didn't see. I really didn't see 45 like 
I don't know, making a move like that? It's it's a really weird situation because on the one hand, I think you now have sort of widespread agreement again uh, among never trumpers and democrats and leftists and independents and whatnot that this man is not working for us in our best interest not capable of handling a crisis oh, like yeah. this yeah. i think i think that's the only people who are still in denial about that is the people who are have had their brains scooped out and replaced by oh, Rupert come Murdoch. On. Come on now. Who who are plugged into Fox News twenty four seven. You know, that's not that's not fair because we have we I have lots of friends plugged into MSNBC twenty four seven and they're dangerous folks too. Yes. So I, I agree. You know, you know, I agree. But I'm I'm saying the people I like who are still like vigorously supporting Trump and claiming this is the flu. It's a conspiracy theory, yeah. you know, and he's done everything perfect, basically parroting his party line. You know, it's like they're not reachable no. anymore. No, I, I got friends saying it's the virus that makes you sick, not me. Uh, <laughs> they're not okay. reachable anymore. And so, but um, I guess one way to put I had a me. point. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> originally we were talking about the election year um there's a consensus among never trumpers that said on it that 45 is not capable of leader oh yeah so on the one yeah on the one hand we have this happening where it's it's never been more blatantly clear for anyone with eyes to see right that um right. that not we have not just an incompetent administration but a maliciously incompetent administration right uh, with with contempt for working people, just absolutely absolute contempt. Right. At the same time, again, I had a point. <laughs> I don't know what it was. What, I have the, the I feel the COVID coming on. Coming on. <laughs> well, no, I, I yeah, I've had a lot of like yeah, brain fun. like brain farts. No, so on, there's that happening on on the one hand, but there's also this risk that. Um, that they will go full on totalitarian. State. Full on. Well, and yeah. I don't. I'm. I'm not sure that risk is actually that far away right now. Yeah. I, I think that risk is very present at this moment. Right. And it and the failure because look, okay, Ohio, Ohio is actually acting like rationally. Rational and, adults. Like rational adults, they've closed. They closed schools. They closed restaurants, bars, etc. Yeah. And so on. Um. Ohio's got uh, does Ohio says testing already. Ohio's got testing coming online on Monday or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, testing is rolling out county by county, and like Wayne, Oakland, and Washtenaw counties can't figure this one out somehow. I'm not sure yeah. what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so anywho, um, and 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 we've got community leaders still going out to eat in Saginaw County. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Talking and like bragging about it on Facebook. Bragging yeah. about and, and like have bringing kids to McDonald's for for Happy Meals. Yeah. Which, you know, it's a tough time. You should do something for the kids. But oh yeah, that was something else I wanted to to get into the discussion is when you close schools, a lot of kids don't have a place to eat, to eat meals. <laughs> don't have food, and their parents are not prepared. Because their parents have, you know, have been reliant on this pro- right. On program. Right. Their parents don't have enough money to buy them food. Right, and they're also not accustomed to it because they're not part of because of their work schedule. Right. So you got this massive experiment like going to happen with all these kids out of school, where mm-hmm. um, the parents are not accustomed to having such an intimate daily relationship with their children. The children are in crisis. They're going to be bored out of their skulls. Yeah. They're going to be pretty massive child abuse yeah. across the country. Yeah. Also crank that up by the fact that the parents are experiencing possibly the worst financial pressure in their adult lives, uh, in their whole, in their lives to date. Right. And trying to figure out what to do to keep their home and keep the lights on. And the kids are going to be, bonkers getting on their nerves yeah through no real fault of their own other than being kids being children right 
So I, I fear for that. That's something I think about a lot. Yeah. Because we're already going bonkers. We're with going our, bonkers with our kids here at the house all the time. My God. Right. And, you know, and, the, and actually, we do get out of the house pretty regularly, and it's going to be a shock to the system. It's going to be difficult for them. So we don't know what's going to happen. Um, I know what I'd like to see happen. I'd yeah. like to see all the, the upcoming primaries suspended and yeah. Every one of these uh, states that still has a primary election upcoming needs to immediately convert it into an all absentee ballot system where all the ballots are mailed. Yeah. And they count them. They paper. I'm not saying they should use paper ballots. They should get them all out by mail. They should have been doing this weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Because there's some of them will say there's not time for that. Well, yeah, there's lots. There is time if you if you have money and will. Right. Um, They have the money. They don't have the will. Right. So, but that's what they need to do. And you know, they'll also. It's amazing how many people you can enfranchise that way too. But isn't that weird? It's weird. Yeah, but that has to happen. And um, yeah. I, I don't know what's going to happen with the census because you don't want to be sending census workers door to door and become making them each into a vector. Absolutely not. <laughs> right. All right. And then they get to carry it from door to door. How yeah. cool is that? So, I mean, oh but you know, m- most people get that by mail, but they do right. in person interviews too, but that's a hazard. So I don't yep. know what's to become of that. But yeah, so, yeah. so it's, this is going to be bonkers. Uh, this is going to be, uh, we're in uncharted territory. Uncharted territory. And, it's going to be a mess. And the biggest reason we're in uncharted territory is we have no, I mean, we did, but not for like most living memory do we have a tradition of a, a state, states that really support people, that really support workers in need. Yeah. We, that's we, that's we been widely it. dismantled. Yeah, we, we we were leaning that way. I don't think we ever were that way, but we were leaning that way post Second World War. Right. And it was fine as long as um, uh, uh, blacks were disenfranchised from that system. Yeah. Right. As fine as they long as that get, did not include black folk. They can't get the the the. Uh, we could not yeah, included in like the family wage. The family wage calculus. and all those things. Then then that was fine. We could have this workers' paradise that was Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, but the day black people get invited inside the factory, mm-hmm. um, all that's off the table. Can't have it now. It's not going to happen. And and I think that's and you see it. You still see it when people talk about. Oh well, I know Finland has that kind of education system. We can't do that here. Like, well, well, why can't we do that here? You know, it, it just it wouldn't work. Like, why why wouldn't it work? Well, we'd have to give it to everybody. Yeah, and, you got to dig down, and that's what you hear. And what do you mean? <laughs> and it wouldn't be fair. And it wouldn't be it fair to, to give it to people who haven't worked for it. Yeah, know, or whatever, or and, and or some some version so of like criminals or undeserving or 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 these. like you. Know, it, it it gets bonkers. Like, oh, we can't have parents who don't vaccinate in that system. We can have parents that, you know, just all these things. Yeah, you're going to make everything all, a means test, which is the liberal's favorite activity. Right. So all these e- things and all these issues come to the surface. And what it comes down to when you dig deep enough is that we don't have any kind of national identity or shared sense of um, national self. Yeah. And... And that's and that's largely racial. Our, our racialist policies are the root of that. Mm-hmm. That lack of shared identity. Whereas Finland can say, "Oh, well, yeah, we'd like all of Finland's children to be successful." Yeah. Racial policies are the root of it, in the sense that, "Hey, look, that poor guy is trying to steal your donut." Steal your donut. You don't want that, do you? So, uh, so don't in, pay in that attention to me eating these eating twelve the, dozen donuts, right? This plate of donuts. You know, don't yeah, don't pay any attention to that. The um, but it, it always if you you have to dig for it, but that's the the essence of well, we can't do that here. Yeah, yeah. and and I and I don't think everything is about race. No, um, some of it's about class. Some of it's, yeah, some <laughs> of it's about class. Well, and and I think actually because I actually do think it's all about class. Yeah, and I think that race is about class. Race is weaponized class, right? It's we- it's weaponized class. Yeah. So, um, 
to the haters who are always like, well, you can't address the race issues by addressing class issues. Um, actually, I think you can. Right. I think you can. I think it's actually the only way you can I'm, address them here yeah. because while we've um, weaponized class and race, we've gone all in to pretend that class is not a thing here. Yes. So when you address it and you talk about it, um, people suddenly have to confront realities that they've been looking at all their lives. It's, it's the, like, it's, class is like the matrix, right? Oh, and yeah. no one has been taught to see it and class consciousness is fleeting meaning you might see it for a while in one context but your mind always likes to comfortably retreat it's like the scene in the matrix with cypher where he's eating a steak dinner and basically saying he wants to go back in the Listen me uh, back put in. me back in plug me back into the matrix i, I know that this is fake and this steak dinner is not a the steak is not a real steak but it's Man, is it delicious. It is. Yeah, it is, babe. Um, it really is. So, yeah, that's class. Um, anarchist organizing. What's happening locally here and what can you advocate and talk to people about as far as, like, <coughs> because if we don't want, you know, I, I'm not a, a big statist. So, like, you know, sometimes I call myself a socialist because I want social welfare programs, but I don't like seeing everything driven top down i kind of despise it yeah i want to see distributism and you know like local organizations and really as local as possible which to me means anarchists organizing yeah but the problem is when everyone is poor and and you know and the the corporations have been getting corporate welfare and people no longer do yeah then like it's the, really hard to organize. It's hard to organize and it's hard to get things done because individuals don't have resources anymore. Right. We've been they've been stripped, strip mined away from from individuals. But given all that, people are organizing to mm-hmm. try and help people in the, the mutual, you know, Kropotkin mutual aid, mutual aid sense. So what's so happening? I've seen a couple of things. There's a Washington County mutual aid group up there's a um, um, mutual aid Network of Ypsilanti, the many, um, that are both up, and um, it's a little, it's a little dicey at the moment, right? Right, where it's uh, dicey is the wrong word. Like we're still trying to find our footing about how to implement things because the state's actually being very slow in rolling some things out. Of course, right, and at the same time, some of these things are like are only like actually possible by the state, right? Yeah. Like the. Um, I spent last week trying to get the health department to close everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, when when we say, we mean this literally, she's been on the phone every day to all these <laughs> officials and organizations because Grace is the one in this relationship that can make a phone call without having a panic attack. <laughs> and, um, and having all kinds of like run around and voicemail and et cetera, right? I've been shit posting on Twitter as hard as I can, if that helps Stop. any. <laughs> Well, and 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 in fairness, I'm sure they're very busy, yes. right? Well, especially now that this is like gone public, they're really busy. Well, now they're now they're like have a lot of eyes focused on them. right, right. right. Um, and um, some of these folks that I, I spoke to personally, I, I've also been speaking to the bishop and speaking to our uh, uh, pastor and so on. They just. We've got to basically cancel everything. You've probably seen the Atlantic article, cancel everything. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. And um, uh, so now that that's done, no, we're not exactly done, but I've, I've made those requests and people are starting to get things moving. Um, so the other thing I was working on was trying to actually purchase some antibody tests for COVID-19. They exist. Um, it, they're, it's hard to get your hands on them. And, um, but like, who's going to administer those tests? How well, is like going to happen? DSA medics to use DSA, <laughs> uh, like DSA medics don't have access to a PCR, like automatic right. PCR machine. Right. You can't, so we, there's no way we could do PCR on the ground. Uh, PCR is polymerase chain reactions. Yeah. Um, the antibody test for COVID-19 actually only takes 15 minutes, but it does involve a blood prick. So it's, it's a, it's a bloodborne disease issue. Oh yeah. Um, so there's lots of issues around it. And if, and apparently the health department here is going to be doing it in two weeks, maybe three. Bless their hearts. Yeah. Um, it's just if another you, example of how ill-prepared we were. 
if you have symptoms, they can test you at St. Joe's now. But you have to have you have to be presenting symptoms. You can't just sort of like get screened and be tested as part of the screen to make sure and then quarantine as needed based on that test. So some of these things, there's a lot of like, who's going to do it? How are they going to do it? How can they implement it? Where do you get the test from? There's a lot of that going on. But just broadly, in very broad strokes, um, we're pressing to get everything closed but the hospitals, the pharmacies, and the groceries. Mm-hmm. Um, for everyone without a house to have one. Uh, oh, and pantries. Food pantries need to stay open. And for uh, delivery... They have to change the way they do business, though. Fundamentally. Yeah. They can, I think they can only do deliveries. Deliveries are people like, you know, someone comes out to meet you at your car and, you know, with a mask on. And it's, exactly. Give them your order or whatnot. <laughs> exactly. Um and and I'm not I'm actually not looking at my notes. This is all from memory. And um, so there's there's closing things, uh, canceling. And remembering this is this is not a snow day, right? So we can't just get together with our friends at the park, right? We can't. Although just, you can, if you live in a place with parks or whatnot, you can go out. You can yeah, you, you can, can go, to the park. go out. You just need to distance yourself. So we're still going to be taking the kids to the park to like hike. Right. On the trails. We're going to be separated from other groups. But we're going to be separated from any other groups, and they're not using the playground equipment at all. Not even touching it. Not even touching it. That's So that's what we're talking about when um, it's not a snow day. So there are things you can do, but you can't go hang out with your buddies. You can FaceTime with your buddies. You can talk to your buddies. You can text your buddies. You can't go get together. Yeah. Right. Um, And... um, Gosh, pantries. Oh, food, water, and sanitation. Some people don't have running water. I'm assembling. I was talking. I was texting you the other day about. So should I get the bleach? Because I don't. I actually don't use a lot of bleach. I use about a quart of bleach a year. Right. Right. Um. So I'm like, uh, but I could get for like ten dollars. I can get like three gallons of bleach, and I can make all the sanitizing kits, all the sanitizing wipes we could ever need, right. and plenty to share. Right. So I'm I'm developing sanitizing kits with a gallon right. of water. Um, bleach spray and some towels, some cloth towels. You can discard or rewash them. So when I go out, uh, when I have been going out, because I've gone to, I stopped going to restaurants last Monday, but I did go to a pharmacy and I went to some stores. You know, when I go out, I'm putting on gloves. I'm not masking up. I'm putting on gloves and then after afterwards I'm stripping off the gloves and I'm sanitizing my car uh, steering wheel with a bleach wipe. Yeah. And then my analytic shift and um, gear shifter, I guess. And mm-hmm. then, of course, going in and out of work, getting, uh, leaving my desk for lunch, coming back from lunch, um, going to the restroom, coming back from the restroom, I'm... Washing my hands, washing my hands. You washing know, my thoroughly. hands in my sleep, I'm washing my, my hands. hands. Are raw. <laughs> <laughs> you know that one, like I washed my hands so much I can see my notes from 1995. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what are... What are your you? I know you went out on Friday, which was you know you Dangerous told me hell. not to go out. It was a kind of a hazardous. You were masked up. I was fully masked though, and I had clothes on that I stripped off when I got back to the house to put into the washroom. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm yeah again. So masks are in very short supply. We have only a handful. Mm-hmm. Um, and, th- and that we actually bought. We actually had access to from before the panic, right? Thing. Right. right. For, stuff they the were tr- like for 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 construction, construction, and and painting, and um, stuff. Right. And and um and nitrile gloves that are also like for construction yeah, and painting. And but we, just to keep, had those. keep a barrier between uh, yourself. Well, I think we we got we got some of those when we started prepping specifically yeah. for this about a month ago. Right. Um. But just to to like you touch the gas pump, you want to you want a glove on for that. Right. No, I wore I wore gloves to go into. Played against sports. I bought a weight bench. Um, oh, so oh yeah. Oh, you, you did that. But go on. Yeah, and um, yeah, similar to go to the pharmacy. I had gloves on, and then mm-hmm. uh, after each outing, as like those gloves go into the trash, and then I wash my hands. Wash my hands. Yeah. But the idea is to get sanitation available to people who who can't sanitize everything yes. because they can't afford it. They don't have running water, etc. Right. Right. So just some very basic tools for sanitizing. Um. And, you know, for washing up as needed. Um, 
we also have a protocol we're developing for um like like a, a, a social distancing protocol about how far to sit away from each other, mm-hmm. what to wear, um, and what the practice is to make a no contact delivery, to make a light contact delivery, like for someone who can't bring their groceries into the door. Yeah. Um, and um, how to manage that if you're how, the, how to manage that if you so, need to. so that the delivery person doesn't become a vector doesn't become a vector. And if you get in light contact, you can deliver one uh, once. Yeah. Once. Yeah, yeah. Like so, no. It's like you might do a series of deliveries if it's no contact, right? Uh, you might yeah. drop off a bunch of things. Whereas you can drop off to one person in one place for yeah. a, a I mean, long I, contact because uh, you talked, don't want to bring it from there to the next place. We don't. I, we talked a little bit about how that might work. I mean, I would consider like you drop a bin at the front door and you you call and you watch from a few feet back. You don't want to touch know? the door, Val. <laughs> yeah, right. You call you call on your phone and you verify that someone came out and got the Right. And then the bin is considered contaminated when you pick up the bin later, so that has to go in a bleach wash or Oh, but I'm not done yet. Okay. There sorry. are other, there are other um organizing issues. Um the um well the goal of keeping the hospitals uh, uh, not overwhelmed um <clears throat> trying to get um, a small bevy of things, a place for everyone to stay, um, every you know empty hotel room, every empty rental, getting people so everyone's off the streets yeah. and has a place to shelter in place, um, getting uh, pretrial, jail, people who are jailed pretrial, getting them out, <laughs> reducing prosecution, eliminating, um, uh, putting a full moratorium on evictions and... and um, uh, shutoffs, any water or power shutoffs, so people can actually stay in their homes, even if they don't have jobs. Even if you don't have jobs, you can still stay in your home because mm-hmm. we're going to stop the evictions and the a lot power of, shutoffs. A lot of people are going to be laid off, right? Because yeah. yeah, that's that's coming, right. that's coming. But you still need to stay in your home because we can't have you out in public places. We're closing all the public places, right? And if you're are we going to put everybody in jail? <laughs> Homeless is not a good a good state to be in. No, this. so I, would, I mean, really, we're going to not put everyone in jail and make that public right. health crisis because right. then they'll still have to go to the hospitals. Be the hot zone, yeah. right? So we can't create new hot zones. We've got to just you know get people out of there as fast as we can. That you know, and really, we're talking about pretrial people. Yeah. yeah. Um, these are people who have not been convicted of a crime. They can go home and wait, mm-hmm. rather than sit in the jail and create a hot spot. Okay. Um. So jails, eviction, power, water. Um, there was one more, and I'm blanking on it. Okay. Yeah, but that's that's the idea right now is to is to keep people um, safe and able to shelter in place and care for their own children. So we can't tell you. We don't know where you're listening to this. We can't tell you who to get in touch with. But if you poke around on Facebook or on other social media, I bet you can find a mutual aid group in your community. In your community. And you can work with your mutual aid group. And you probably need a lot of these same things in your community. Right. And you can figure out who to call. You want to call the. You want to call your local sheriff. You want to call your yeah. local magistrates and judges. Right. And you want to call um, your local municipal, city, and county elected officials to press for these measures so that people will actually be able to quarantine. Yes. Because, and, and honestly, there's no reason the governor, California's governor has done this already. There's no reason your governor, there's no reason our governor can't uh, commandeer the hotels for A, extra quarantine beds, mm. for housing for people that don't have a house to go to, and for, um, to create um, a, a, What's the word? Uh, decentralized emergency rooms, so you can stop infecting people right. at the emergency room site. Right. So we could do this, and we don't need a federal mandate to do it. Right. Your county health department probably has sweeping powers to do this already. Yes, your county health department already yeah. has these powers, and you could probably do this at a county level. So, yeah, we will try to have some links and documents. Grace is working on making stuff available. And this is sort of the nature of like bottom up organizing is that uh, when something looks like expertise that's been vetted <clears throat> and um, it circulates and the, and the bad info tends to get weeded out by a lot of eyes as it circulates. The good info um, keeps up. Right. So, I mean, and people are, are looking for guidance. They're kind of desperate for guidance. So right. um, David Feldman, a podcaster I know, did a show 
in which he asked his guests what they thought we should do. And he got, you know, advice of like average quality, I guess, you know, mixed, a mixed bag of advice and people clearly weren't informed. After I heard that show, I sent him a series of talking points, which I had gotten from public health experts, including from the site uh, Mm flattenthecurve.com. And then two days later, he read my talking points uh, right in in the first segment of his show and then talked about flattening the curve. And then he, so he used that as, he had been looking for a place like a like a metaphor, you know, mm-hmm. to focus his thinking about the event, and he hadn't heard or or hadn't like realized that this was the public health consensus, right? The flatten the curve concept, right? And so he, when I sent him this, it clicked, and he oh yeah, he titled the show. He organized the whole show around that concept of flattening the curve. Yeah. So you can. Have Influence, you can you know. influence. talk to everyone you know i don't even have our podcast running but i can still influence other podcasters right, right? so well, and and i really you don't have to wait for someone's permission you can right. do this right you can make a phone call you can oh and another piece is that several people towards the end of the week i start explaining to people actually you need to understand that i'm canceling everything i'm not coming to any of these rehearsals classes appointments i'm not doing it so when you're asking them to cancel, you have a vested interest. Right. In. So I'm not coming to any of these things. Right. So our kids were going to be in a choir concert. I said, you I'm not been gonna... asking them right. to cancel. They finally did, but it took they they had to see it in the news. Right. Before they were before convinced. they were convinced. And but the the real the shift though when I emailed and said, "Listen, I'm not coming. My children aren't coming." If you opt out. Then they feel like they have permission. You set, an, you set an example because you represent other people who likely are going to opt out as well. Right. You're just the the front runner. Maybe. And it happened a couple of times, several times. Right. I would just say point blank, I'm not doing this anymore. Right. And the next email I would get is, okay, we've closed. We've closed. We're not doing this. Right. So you may have more influence, influence than, you than you realize. I mean, I'm not taking personal credit for this except as a joke, but there was an MLive story about Saginaw Valley State University staying open. And yes. I shared it on Twitter and was commenting about how this is a bad idea. Right. And a couple hours later, they announced that they were... Right. And I have no idea if my sharing it led to that ha- happening or comment or spread. But, you know, you do you, you may be a little fish in a big pond, but you put out ripples and people feel them. And when things are primed... When people are looking for answers and guidance, if you're seem if you're out there saying something, people will hear it. If you're saying something good, they'll they'll hear it. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Shall we wind up? Let's do it. It's been a long. It's been a while. It's been a while. I'm gonna play an outro song that's a little upbeat, and uh, we'll say goodbye for now. Talk when we can. Talk when we can. I'm gonna try and do a live stream thing. But I have a lot of technical problems and all that. And see anyway, what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Okay, here we go. Bye, folks. Later.
Sure, my when we met a song, 